Welcome once again to this 10 minute word break. This is Youth Pastor Alicia Fields from Victory Fellowship Outreach Ministries based out of Norristown, Pennsylvania, where our pastors are Bishop Gordon Fields Sr. and co-pastor Doretha Fields. I invite you to grab your Bibles or your Bible apps as we go right into the word of God. We're going to be going to the book of Psalm chapter 23 on today. Um, we're going to be reading the entire chapter, which is verses 1 through 6. Uh, it may be a very familiar passage for many of you, but we're going to look at what the word of God says today. And it reads, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today we're going to be talking from the topic of the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd. Uh, we have read this passage um, as it is a psalm written by David who served as the king of Israel. Um, but he also, before he became king, was once a shepherd of sheep. And so we see a lot of parallelism and metaphors being used to describe God himself, even as a shepherd is one who guides his sheep. And we began to read the first um, set of verses that said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is a declaration that David is making. It is a choice, a decision of a place of contentment. Um, to be able to reach a place to say you don't want, um, God has to bring you to a place of contentment because if we're very honest with ourselves, we're often uh, in a place of constant want and never feeling satisfied, always wanting the next better thing. But to say that I shall not want, it is a decision or a declaration that is being made. So in other words, to acknowledge that the Lord is my shepherd, that I shall not want, is to acknowledge that God makes provision for all of my needs. And as we continue to read, it said in the next verse, he makes me to lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside still waters. In other words, uh, the psalmist here, uh, David begins to decree and declare and to acknowledge that God, you know, he will bring us into a place of safety. And so when you understand about pastures, um, when you're shepherding sheep, you actually have to lead them to green pastures or foliage where there is greenery for them to graze on. And sheep actually cannot drink from rapidly running waters. They cannot drink from, um, you know, what you may, we may say violent streams that are, are highly active, but the water has to be very peaceful, very still in order for them to drink. And so just like sheep, God himself will bring us into a place of safety. Uh, so he brings us to a place of green pastures. He makes provision for us and he brings us to a place of still waters because he knows what we can handle and what we can uh, digest. So he will only lead us to where we can actually consume, right? Where the waters won't overtake us, but where we can digest what he has. So uh, the first verse tells us he makes provision for all my needs. And the second verse says he brings us into a place of safety. Um, and also when we said that he restores my soul, uh, this is where God begins to, um, David begins to acknowledge that God brings restoration. He brings rejuvenation. Um, he refreshes us, and that only comes through God himself. And then verse 4, as it begins to say, as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. 
for you are with me and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And so this is David beginning to acknowledge that God is a comforter and he is our God, even when we face difficult situations where we may fear even death may be nearby or we fear danger um, because we talk about a valley of a shadow, a shadow is actually a reflection of the real thing, but it's not it itself, but it, it can create fear. Um, so sometimes we'll go through some things in life that will cause us to feel the shadow of death or the shadow of destruction or the shadow of danger. But we are reminded that God, he comforts us and he guides us with his his rod and a rod is used by a shepherd to redirect sheep. And so whenever we feel the correction of God, that is his rod. Uh, verse five talks about how he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And so uh, what we know that to mean is that God avenges me, that no matter what I go through or, and I'm being saying I, cause I'm making it personal, but I go through or you go through whatever we go through the Bible um, where the, we know the Lord says vengeance is mine. And so the Lord will avenge us. The Lord will rectify every wrong. The Lord uh, will set straight every injustice. This is what it means that he prepares the table. Not that I set the table. I don't prepare the table. I don't assemble the table, but it's God himself that will do that. And as it goes on in that same verse, it says how he anoints my head with oil and my cup runs over. In other words, God favor rests upon us and he provides the abundance, the abundance of health the abundance of wealth, anything that we have, it is by God's grace and mercy that has been extended to us. And so that is what it means that it will run over. It means that it's beyond just what can be contained. Um, and then finally, as we look, it says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. So in other words, God's protection goes before me. It, it surrounds me. Uh, it it uh, defends me. And so his grace and mercy and goodness and mercy, I say, how they follow me, that God's protection is all around me. And as I would dwell in the house of the Lord, it means he's chosen me, that I would actually remain in his presence, that I've been invited to come into the house of the Lord. And so it's just such a privilege to know God, to hear God, to be led by God, and to receive his correction. And so today, I just leave this word with you that we serve a good shepherd.